I received an interesting question the other day from a longtime viewer who was asking, hey, where do I find UK comic books, comic books from Great Britain? So I'm on my favorite website here in the whole world, comicbookplus.com. If you've never heard of this before, I highly recommend checking it out. These are all public domain comic books. So you're not going to find Marvel and DC comics on here because obviously those are trademarked. But I am going to go right up here to the top underneath Forum, and I'm going to click on Comic Books. And I'm going to see an entire listing of all the comic books listed on Comic Book Plus. And there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of comic books. So buried in here somewhere are the UK comic books, comic books from Great Britain. There's actually an easy way to find them. I'm going to scroll right on down. This is an alphabetical list. So now I'm at the O's, the Q's, the S's. And as I get right down here to the bottom, I'm going to see the very last entry is Ziff Davis comic books. And then underneath that is other titles, small press, one title, and then check that out. UK comic books. It's dead last. My poor friends in the UK, you're absolutely dead last here on the list. However, you're first on our hearts because we've got here 57 titles, 2,600 books. So let's check out what we can do here with these books. I'm going to click on this button here, this 2649. And what we're going to find out here is underneath now UK comic books, we've got a breakdown. We've got Ivanhoe, we've got all sorts of things here, Alan Class. So I'm going to just take a look here at a couple. This Arnold Book Company is a great example of one where you can click on the title. So underneath the Arnold Book Company, anything that's blue is a hyperlink. So Black Magic, Frankenstein, Space Comics. Okay, now we're talking Space Comics. So I'm going to click on that. And we're going to see here now we've got five or six comic books that have come up that are now public domain. Now these, I'm going to click on the first one here, Captain Valiant number 50. These comic books are completely free to use. You can download them. You can make art prints with them. You can do whatever you like with them. So here's just a great example. Captain Valiant number 50, I'm going to take this issue and I'm going to check it out. So by clicking on the page, you're going to move now forward into the comic book itself. You can see here at the top it says page 2 of 32. I could scroll through the different pages. I'll go to page 21 for example and there it is there. You can read these comics. You can right click and you can save the image. You can, depending on your web browser, you can basically extract out the images here pretty easily. You can also flip from comic to comic. So there's a previous button and there's a next button. So right now I'm on Captain Valiant number 50. If I go to next at the top here, I'm now going to go to number 56. Some of these scans are pretty high quality. Now you're going to get a different range of the quality of scans because there's hundreds of people that are contributing to this huge archive trying to preserve this great art form. But this is a great example of something where you could extract out the image and you could put this on a t-shirt, a fine art print, you could make a funny print. You could just use it as is. So there's lots of opportunity here on this website. So there's this thing here at the top called a breadcrumbs trail, and it's right there. And you can see where we're exactly sitting. So I can go back in this breadcrumbs trail. I could click on UK comic books, for example, and go back now to the beginning, and I can check out where we're at. This is a huge list. As I scroll on down, there's so many different comics. And you can see there's funny stuff, there's romance stuff, I love romance comics, so I'm going to go here into Confessions Library. I'm going to click on the title, and we're going to see there's two issues available. I'm going to pick Confessions Library number 16, I Danced Into Danger. Uh-oh, the sock hop is not all it's cut out to be. This poor lady's left out in the cold. Now, it's really cool here with this public domain aspect because you can find some really interesting scans here. So here's a great example. Because this is black and white, you can probably get a pretty decent scan out of this if you were to use, say, Inkscape. You could create a good vector image if you were to find something here that's sort of standalone. This is a great example right here. So I'm going to save this picture and we're going to do something with it. Okay, so I'm inside of Inkscape and Inkscape is a free program that you can use to create vectors. And I'm just going to go here now, I'm going to select the image and I'm going to select Path, Trace Bitmap. And then over on the right hand side, you're going to see the trace bitmap window opens up. I can click update preview down at the bottom. We can see that's pretty good. You can always change the threshold at the top 
You can make it less or more. And you can click Update Preview and you'll see it change. And as I click Apply, it's now going to take a screenshot, basically trace the lines and create a vector out of this. So there's my vector image. I'm going to click on the original image and click Delete. And now I've got this vector image. So the thing about a vector image is it's mathematical formulas inside of it. When I click Edit Paths by Node, these are little nodes that you can change. You can move these, you can modify them, you can you know, extract out an image now that's extremely detailed. And you could use this now as a vector. Now what I'd recommend when you first start out is that you remove out what you don't want to be the vector and then you could sell it as a vector. So I'm actually going to delete this out and we're going to do this one more time but I'm going to start off in Photoshop instead. Alright, so what I'd recommend is if you're using a program like Photoshop or Affinity Photo, you want to extract out the image first. So I'm actually just going to duplicate this layer and then I'm going to remove the background. So now I can modify this image. So I'm going to go here to my eraser tool and I'm going to make sure my eraser is nice and big, 100 hardness, and then I'm going to go through here now and just basically remove out everything I don't want to have be a scan. So I'm going to go right up to the guy's hair and I'm going to try to remove here everything outside of what I want scanned. Okay, and we're back in Inkscape now and now I'm going to do a trace bitmap. So I'm going to click on my JPEG file. You'll notice it's huge, right, because there's a bunch of white in the background. We're not going to trace all of that. Trace bitmap, exact same as before. I'm going to click Update Preview. That looks pretty good. I'll click Apply and then we'll see now when I extract this out, it's just the size of the two people dancing. It's not capturing all of the white. So I'm going to click Delete on the original image. I'm going to move this back in. Now, some of our eagle-eyed viewers here may notice when I click on Edit Paths by Node, there is a little piece over here that I didn't catch when I was using Photoshop. So that is actually a piece of ink that is sitting off to the side. So you really want to double check when you're doing a trace bitmap now that you have a clean vector. So I'm going to click Edit Paths by Node and then I'm going to remove this out. Very easy to do. I'm just going to drag my mouse over it and just hit the Delete key. And that's it. And you can see now actually the little marching ants have now changed. So we've now truly captured exactly the image and nothing else. So this would be a great vector that you could sell now. You could just save this as an SVG file, a vector file, and this is infinitely scalable. Somebody could make a mural of this 50 feet high if they wanted to on the outside of a building, or you could put it on a coffee mug, a t-shirt, what have you. You can also change the color pretty easily down below because it's a vector simply by changing the color down in the color palette, it updates the vector itself. You can always go back to black. It's that would be the preferred one that you would want to sell it as, but somebody could open this up as a vector inside of Inkscape and change it themselves. To export this is pretty easy to do. Over on the right hand side, there's an export button. You're going to click the export button and then from here you can change the file location on where you'd like to save it and then you can also change the size of this as well. Now if you're saving as an SVG, you're not going to do this. You're just going to go File, Save As, and then you're just going to save it as an SVG file. That's a vector file. But if you're exporting to a PNG, that's a picture, then here you're going to want to do Selection, and then you're going to want to scroll out, make sure the selection's nice and big. You'll see here I've got 1400 by 1400. I'm going to change the dots per inch to 300. That's standard for really high quality scans. So when you're selling a PNG file, you can market this as a 300 DPI nice big scan. I try to shoot for around 5000 by 5000 300 DPI. So that's what I'll list it as. I'll say it's a minimum of 5000 times 5000 at 300 DPI. And then for print on demand snobs like myself, that's something I would want to buy because it's high quality scan. Simply hit the export button down below and you'll export this document now as a PNG file. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. There's a ton of comic books on Comic Book Plus. So many different genres. Don't just think you're going to be looking at superhero comics. The list goes on and on. You can spend hours in here like I do finding high quality scans that you can then create digital designs or print on demand designs and you can make some sales and have some fun. Thanks a lot for watching. Here's another video on some cool public domain assets to help you supercharge your graphics design journey.